ty, Tajko Bara wrzucał świetny materiał z ds 1, który ja na pewno chcę zobaczyć i go sobie obejrzymy. Widzowie, <laughs> główna idea filmu. Czy możesz skończyć DS1, ale w odwróconej kolejności bossów? I to jest dobra zagadka. I ja wam powiem tak. Nie, nie możesz. Biorąc pod uwagę fakt, że miałbyś w takim razie zabić Gwyna, ale Gwyn ci kończy grę, to nawet go pominimy. Jak można jak najbardziej od tyłu zepsuć Dark Soulsy, żeby ich zrobić od samego końca? To teraz tak. Sefa można zabić jako pierwszego bossa. Jak by to zrobić? Trzeba byłoby zeskipować się do Anor Londo, zrobić skipa w Anor Londo Defcap Glitchem do, forte do archiw. Da się. Sefa się da zabić pierwszego. Bed of Chaos. Czy da się Bed of Chaos zabić jako pierwszego bossa? Nie da się, moim zdaniem. Nito. Czy da się Nito zabić jako pierwszego bossa? Totalnie nie da się skipnąć Pinwilla, więc Nito odpada. Czy da się For Kingsów? Nie, trzeba mieć klucz z Sifa. Zawsze nie da się skipnąć Sifa. Ale jakbyśmy poszli od samego początku, czy da się skipnąć Asylum Demona? Da się tak zabić Asylum Demona, że się go zabija, ale gra nie zalicza zabicia go i boss cały czas żyje, ale się wychodzi z Asylum. Taurusa da się skipnąć. Gargulca... Da się skipnąć? Nie, Gargulca się nie da skipnąć, słuchajcie. Gargulca trzeba zabić, ale można go zabić tak, że mu nie będzie działo AI. Capre, Motyla da się skipnąć, Gapinga da się skipnąć, Quailak da się skipnąć. Iron Golema się nie da skipnąć bez kitu, czyli zawsze będzie trzeba zabić Iron Golema. Totalnie nie da się go skipnąć. ONS-a też trzeba zabić, ale kurde, jak on to zrobi w odwróconej kolejności? W sensie on tego nie zrobi w odwróconej kolejności. Without the use of any glitches, you only have to kill 13 of these 23 bosses, but okay. things get interesting with the use of glitches. Glitches bring this number down to only three bosses to beat the game, and there is even okay. a speedrun around this. The least bosses speedrun kills four bosses because it is a prepare to die edition category. One of the skips is only possible on the remastered version, but four is still low. However, we are not here for least bosses, but instead flipping the bosses on their heads. I wanted to see how close I could get to defeating the bosses in reverse order. Typically the first boss is the Asylum Demon with Gwen being the last boss. Obviously with the four lords and how open the world is, this may not be the order every player beats the game in. So I split some of the bosses into levels, for example the four lords are one equal level. The order I fight the mm -hmm. four lords does not matter as Ma long as I'm says, fighting them early. Okay. Ideally the list would switch no, with no, Gwen being no, the first boss defeated. However, there are some nie requirements that prevent this. I need <laughs> access to the Firelink Altar to be able to fight Gwyn, so either Framp or Kof are needed to bring me there. No matter which Serpent is picked, the Lord Vessel is needed to be brought to the Altar. There are two thoughts of which boss would be the first one defeated to get access to one of the Serpents. You can have Gargoyles be the first boss, meaning less bosses are defeated out of order. Gargoyles are such an early enemy, so I went with the second option that uses a seniority roll. If a boss is needed to be defeated early, then the later game boss... Zawsze jak patrzę, jak ktoś gra takim ciekawym buildem w D7, mi się to wydaje mega, mega kreatywne, bo nigdy nie gram takimi broniami. Muszę kiedyś sobie zrobić D1 inną bronią. Tak, totalnie, totalnie inną. Boss should come first. This makes the first boss that face become Sif, so I can fight the four kings. I will go into more detail later, but this is the order I'm beating the bosses in. The run is over when I defeat the final boss, Asylum Demon. No da się Sifa zabić jako pierwszego, no? It is a typical start with Fee for the Master Key and Black Fire Bombs for a glitch in a bit. The rest of my creation is flavor so I can wake up in a dingy cell. The Asylum holds the first boss of the game and is required to progress unless you use glitches. In this run, I use the boring method of killing the demon in the first encounter with Fire Bombs. This tells the game to have Oscar give you the Big Pilgrim's Key because the boss was killed early. However, this happens before the boss is fully considered defeated so I quit out reloading the world. Now Oscar has the big pilgrim's key, but the asylum demon uh -huh. is still alive. I call this myth <laughs> boring and there are cooler... To działa widzowie w skrócie tak. Zabija się bossa, gra rejestruje, że zabiłeś bossa, ale wychodzi z gry przed zakończeniem się animacji bossa, przez co boss nie miał końcowej animacji śmierci, więc żyje, bo nie umarł do końca, ale gra rejestruje twojego killa i jak pójdziesz do Oscara teraz, to Oscar da ci klucz, który pozwoli ci otworzyć drzwi za nim. Czytujemy się gra jeszcze raz, ale może wyjść z tego. Ja za każdym razem, jak oglądam coś z DS-1. 
This is done by hitting A and right bumper at the same time to get the brightness menu over the inventory. I then highlight the humanities in my inventory and hit A by the brightness and the brightness menu is selected. This will bring up the use font of the humanity, but use item is at the top and we want to select default to the brightness menu. Hitting down and right on the D-pad at the same time moves the brightness menu without moving the inventory prompt. Eee, na klawiaturze się to wykonuje o wiele łatwiej za pomocą myszki, no nie? Więc można to wykonać też za pomocą tylko pada na PC, ale z myszką się to robi o wiele lepiej. After dropping down, I can use the master key to enter the valley of the Drix. I continue picking up souls as I make my way to the. Nie, ej, źle mówiłem. Dasz się skipnąć Iron Golema. Tak. Dobrze mówisz, Sywit. Da się. Bez kitu. Trzeba zrobić running animation w momencie, gdy on robi graba i się wyrzuca do Norlondo. Da się. Masz rację. Slipping past the Drakes, I climb the ladder to get to the red tier stone ring. Might as well grab the extra damage while I'm here. I drop down, looking at where the Drakes are for once and continue on to the elevator that will take me to the dark room. Ja widzowie, chyba. Teraz zrobimy sobie na dniach jakoś. Mi się wydaje, że nawet w tym tygodniu. One shot challenge. Będziemy grać w DS1 w taki sposób, żeby każdego bossa zabić tylko i wyłącznie jednym atakiem, jednym inputem. Zrobię to bez DLCH, bo niestety Manus się sprowadza bardziej do RNG niż do skilla, niż do przygotowania. I to trwa 5 godzin, słuchajcie. Zrobienie jest idealnym RNG Manusa, ale zrobimy one shot challenge. In the basin, I grab the grass crash shield because it is a shield I know how to parry with. Then I quit out to reset the halberd knight for some cheese. After loading back in, I run at the knight, who in a brief lapse of judgment tries to stab me and falls off the cliff. I receive the Black Knight helper telepathically from the knight as I continue up basin to get some more items. This soul by the Hydra is picked up, the bow is picked up for a glitch later, and the crystal lizard is killed with a punch and a black firebomb for the twinkling tight knight it drops. This is all for the basin, so it is Andre time where I break the game. At Andre, the first thing I do well, is dupe the smallest soul by 99. This stoop is done exactly the same way the humanity one was done, but this ha, time I get 19,800 19, souls instead of 99 With these wydaje. souls, I purchased 999 wooden arrows to store the quantity of 999. Then I prompt swap arrows over to lawn swords to buy one lawn sword of a quantity of 9. Attempting to buy another lawn sword after doing this will give me a stored quantity of negative 8. When buying the weapon, the game subtracts the quantity held from the max quantity of the item. In this case, it is 1 minus 9, which is equal to negative 8. I then perform the soldier from earlier, but this time I target the twinkling titanite and want to drop it instead of using the item. When dropping an item with the negative... On drop minus 8 titanite ale nie możesz mieć minusowej ilości przedmiotów, więc drop i tak naprawdę 8. The game subtracts a negative from the item. Subtracting a negative turns the equation into addition and gives me eight twinkling titanites, and now I have ten. This is all I need to level up the halberd to plus five, but I realize I don't have enough souls. This is where me buying those arrows comes into play. Dropping the arrows, but then hitting no in the inventory will store that quantity of 999 for me to use. I then dupe every soul I have by 999, and if I have multiple of the same soul item, I drop all but one each time before duping the soul. I have to reset the stored quantity each time, but after a while I end up with a little under 5 million souls. With this mining done off camera, I upgrade the halberd to plus 5 and buy the crest of Artorias. I also bought the weaponsmith box. I never use it. Even after this spending spree, I still have 4.7 million souls to use, so I head up to the Undead Parish Bonfire to level up. Vitality is level to 51, Endurance to 40, Strength to 60, and Dex to 18. Strength and Dex are stat requirements to use the Halberd. Health is always nice, but the Endurance will be needed for a glitch later in the run. With the setup done, I can make my way to the first boss of the run, Sif the Great Grey Wolf. On my way to Sif, I equip RTSR and set up with the Titanite Demon. It takes a little bit, but I'm able to comfortably get into RTSR range. I open the door with the Crest of Artorias, sprint past the really smart AI, and make my way to Sif's boss room. Ej, widzowie, generalnie, jak macie pomysł na jakikolwiek challenge w DS-ach, to piszcie w komentarzach, bo ja muszę powykonywać jakieś challenge, że dawno nic nie robiliśmy. Sif is easily avoided, and I get only one jump back. The fight goes insanely good, as I warp back to the Undead Parish. Ej, jak patrzę na taki gameplay jak tu, na przykład to, co on zrobił, te chłopie na hitlesie to jest insta-hit, nie? On tu odskoczy i mu zadał hita na 100%. To musiałby mieć giga farta. The fight goes insanely good as I warp back to the Undead Parish. 
The next boss on the list are the four kings of the fest waiting to get to the head back to Firelink. On my way to the shortcut elevator, I grab the Firekeeper soul before heading down to Firelink. From Firelink, I can use the elevator from earlier to get down to the new Londo runes. Typically, lords are locked behind a golden fog wall that only disappears once the lord vessel is placed. You don't need to place the lord vessel to fight the four kings. They do not have a golden fog gate, but I needed the covenant of Artorius ring to traverse the abyss. I could go the normal way, but I don't feel like dealing with a seal, so instead I'm going to perform seal skip. This skip oh, is yes. not needed, but it is faster than going seal the normal way. Seal skip is so fast. Look how it will look. I turned my head to the right. I walk off the edge while performing a quit out. Once I see the camera start to go top down, I quit out. When done correctly, my position should be stored out of bounds. Put the game out, but Grago will be just a second to prove what he's done. I need to quit out before the game kills me. The glitch is easier with fall control, but I get it first try. If you want to do this glitch yourself, use fall control. It is giga free. After loading back in, I roll off to another area, which gives me the def cam. This drop does not kill you like the last, and the quit out is just to remove the def cam. I continue further out of bounds until I get above the abyss. Once I get there, I drop off and land down below into the abyss. I need to make sure I walk off correctly, or I won't get the damage negation from the fall because I would be out of its range. I drop the sword hilt here to help reorient myself for the second yes, king spawn. After equipping the halberd, I make my way to the first king spawn and DPS check them. Once I see they're one hit away from death, I make sure I have enough stamina to get extra attacks in. This fight works like the gods can duo from Elden Ring. The shared health bar can be damaged by attacking a king after they are dead. Still can't believe how many things this game copies from Elden Ring. After the first king is defeated, I run over to where the second king will spawn using that item I dropped as a reference. This king gets demolished like the first, but now I don't know where the third king spawns in. I should really learn that, but the tried and true method of spin to win always works. The third king has finally spawned in and decides to be more tricky than the first two. I defeated it, but unfortunately, I did not set up a three king's kill. The third king also wasted some time, so the fourth king does not take too long to spawn in. It only takes two hits on this king before the four kings are defeated. Now a bonfire and cough are here after the cutscene. I thought lighting the bonfire would allow me to walk to it later, but you have to rest at it. You would think this would soft lock you because you could not warp out of the abyss without the Lord Vessel. However, Frumsoft thought of this and gave the bonfire the ability to warp without the Lord Vessel. I did not know this at the time, so instead I warp away without resting at it to the Undead Parish. The next boss is Ones and Anor Londo, so we're going to need to do some glitches to get to them. First is getting into Sin's fortress without reading the two bells of awakening to open the gate. Yeah, this is where Sin's gate skip comes in. I get this all down the staircase. At the third pillar, I carry and repost all of the triggering the death camera. Then you turn around the camera. It's like in Micro Machines, and the camera is set up in a whole way. But the walking to the front means that your body goes to the front. The walking in any other direction. Odwraca postać w kierunku, w które ona obecnie patrzy, więc tu się w mega dziwny sposób wtedy postacią porusza. A najgorsze jest to, że trzeba przyjść po spiralnych schodach. I to działa w taki sposób, że gra przestaje doczytywać jakiekolwiek elementy, w tym wszystkie bramy i można przejść przez bramę, wyjść z gry, wejść do gry i... Do I really need to explain how easy Sin's Fortress is again? The snake enemies just let me run past as always. The blades are easily timed, so I don't get hit and knocked off. The lightning snake is really nice today, but something overtook me. I was possessed for a bit and backstabbed the snake. I watched as it fell, but don't worry, it is still alive, I think. The scripted boulder and snake are easy as always. If you quit out, things no longer happen. I think this is how King Crimson works. Either way, I quickly get past the boulder room and make my way effortlessly outside. I drop down and grab the bonfire to make life easier, and it may seem like I am stuck in Sin's fort now. Not really, I can get out of Sin's even with the gate still closed, but I'm going to be spending the next couple of days of this run in here. Iron Golem blocks the way to Anor Londo. I need to defeat the Golem to be able to get to Anor Londo unless I use Iron Golem skip. Iron Golem skip sucks, like taking me around five hours. First, I need to grab an Ultra Great Sword, and lucky for me, the Merchant in Sen sells the Berserk reference. I also killed the giant that froze explosive boulders to make my life easier. Now, let me try to explain this. Teraz będzie trzeba zrobić ranik atak w golema. Mężczyzna będzie robił graba. Mężczyzna będzie robił graba. Cancel the grab. Not much is known on how this glitch works, but if I hit the golem with a running attack from an Ultra Great Sword at the right time, canceling the grab, this can happen. Pa. I get flown out of bounds at incredible speeds. 
Jak kod tej gry, stary, działa, że coś takiego się dzieje, powiedzcie mi. Że wbiegniecie w przeciwnika z konkretnym atakiem konkretnego musetu broni, tepacie do Anor Londo od Iron Golema. To the point collision no longer exists for me. Sometimes if in proper timing you won't get flown, but the grab will get cancelled and it looks weird. This fling would be pretty useless, but FromSoft gave us a gift. They descended down from the heavens and graced us with an insanely interconnected world. On the other side of what looks like a collapsed tunnel is An Orlando. We can see this in a map viewer with Sen's Fortress and An Orlando loaded in together. Iron Golem's arena is leveled to parts of An Orlando with collision, but it's not easy to get there. If the sun, the moon, and the stars align, I can get flung to a section of An Orlando and loaded in. This glitch is not consistent and just incredibly cursed, but I finally got this. Pa. I did not even believe I got it when I did. I was kind of stunned for a bit. Now we may be in An Orlando, but we are out of bounds without any way to get back in bounds. Ale teraz jak wyjdzie z gry, to Graga przypisze do spawn pointu Anor Londo, tak mi się wydaje, nie? Warp can save us. Rang Warp, There dokładnie. are different ways to Rang Warp and even different ways to perform the different Rang Warps. Warp for this run, I use the third version of the Force Quit Rang Warp, which will be used throughout the run. A Rang Warp is in the name, a Warp that went wrong. Aha, dobra, czyli on musi to jeszcze zrobić. Rang Warp działa widzowie w dużym skrócie tak, że każda lokacja ma przypisaną inną lokację, do której jeżeli... Zgliczuje się jakakolwiek logika w grze przypisanie twojej postaci, to cię wytepa przy wyjściu z gry. Więc na przykład jeżeli w depsach gdzieś się out of bounds zawiesisz, wyjdziesz z gry, to cię wyrzuci do depths entrance, no nie? I jest kilka takich y, różnych zasad logicznych w grze. Speedrunnerzy tego używają, ale tego rąk warpa się bardzo ciężko wykonuje. On jest frame perfect. Jan go będzie wykonywał za pomocą force quita, czyli on wyjdzie z gry i w momencie, gdy gra będzie się załadowywać, to w ostatniej klatce ładowania gry da Alt F4, co sprawi, że gra zdropi w całą pamięć odnośnie ułożenia jego postaci i go przywróci do poprzedniego, z którym jest połączony. On Dark Souls defaults to the failsafe location. Each area has its own failsafe location, but for An Orlando it is the very start. Where the force quit comes into play is after I warp with the dark sign, I want to force close mm -hmm. the game at the last frames of a load teraz, screen. This is made easy with frame. live split and the alt space method. Why in the load screen, I press alt and space to pause the game. I keep doing and undoing the pause until I see the timer's milliseconds go up. The timer is tracking the in-game time, so once it goes up, I know the load is almost finished. I press C to force close the game before relaunching it. When loading back in, I am put at the fail-safe location for An Orlando. Yes, now in An Orlando, the first thing I do is rest at the An Orlando bonfire. I don't really want tak, to do Tak, na randomizerach, to, na randomizerach to się samo z siebie bardzo często robi. Jest zgliczowana logika Iron na randomizerach. Again, and the next boss on my list is Ornstein and Smo. They are guarding Guinevere and the Lord Vessel, which will allow me to fight Gwyn. There's not too much to talk about in An Orlando. I ride the elevator down, do parkour on the rafters, get past the Silver Knight sharpshooters, and rest to, at the Anor Londo interior bonfire. Do From here, I can easily make my way to ONS by jumping over the railings, giving a good segment of this area. I enter the fight against ONS and get maybe a little too cocky and take so much damage from. Nie no, ja tego, i my, my to widzę wyglądam, bo ja tego challenge'u nigdy nie zrobię. Tutaj są naprawdę takie skipy niektóre, które by dwie godziny bym to wykonywał. Skipność takiego golema to jest cztery, cztery godziny życia wyjęte. For in the first phase, killing Ornstein. Now I just need to defeat Super Smo. It may not be the best fight, but I get the job done and make my way to Guinevere. I receive the Lord Vessel and rest at the bonfire. This is where I found out I needed to have rested at the Abyss Bonfire. Now to access the Firelink Altar, I have to warp to Firelink Shrine and head all the way back to the Abyss. I performed Seal Skip again because I did not feel like going the normal way. This time, I rested the Bonfire because I am not doing this again. Now I can speak to Dark Seeker Cough to bring me to the Altar, making sure to select Yes for its dialogue options. Mm -hmm. I'm brought to the Fire Link Altar where I place the Lord Vessel. Zrobię Rung Warpa when the next boss in the order is on the other side of this giant door, but Rung Warp's coming up Ale... again. I nie, nie możesz zrobić Rung, rung Warpa. Czy location może? Of this area, which może, happens to okay. be the start of the Kiln of the First Flame. Now I can face Gwyn, which is easy with a parry combo. I parry Gwyn to the afterlife, and here's the big issue of the run. After defeating Gwyn, there are two endings. One is to link the flame by just going up to the bonfire and linking the flame. This is easy to avoid, but the second one not so much. The other ending requires you to leave Gwyn's boss arena. Using a warp will not work here as it just brings you back to Gwyn's arena. 
A force quit Ron Warp won't work either, as leaving Gwyn's arena is considered anywhere on the map of the Kiln of the First Flame. Dark Souls forcing you into new game after defeating the final boss is dumb. The only solution was to use an external program to warp me back to the Firelink Shrine so I can continue the run. If you don't like this, yeah. then do Iron Golem skip and then do it again. The next boss also had a problem with it, so let me go deal with them. It is time to take on Sif the Maidenless. No, to trzeba program w trzecim. No, to Gwyna nie da się nigdy tak jakby skipnąć jego zabicia, tak jak na przykład. I warp to Anor Londo and make my way into the Duke's archives. The boars are really nice for setting up RTSRs. I make my way into the archives. Up the first elevator are crystal guys I need to be careful of and a channeler that is really scary. I make my way up to the next elevator where I'm going to perform the best glitch. A tu w ogóle da się przejść też bez tego, bez NS zabitego. Once the elevator starts to go up, I quit out. When I load back in, I lock onto this crystal fellow and roll into the pillar before rolling off the edge and quitting out. This is an elevator warp. When an elevator is in its non-default position, reloading the game while in its default position will warp you yes, to the elevator's current setup location. In this case, I am warped up to an out-of-bounds section where I can perform the next glitch, a meme roll. When your equip load and remaster is greater than 25% and equal to or below 29.1%, you can just roll in the air. The rolls have to be spammed and I need enough stamina so when I reach the bottom, the iframes of a roll negate the fall damage. Typically, meme rolls are a little precise, but this one is super furry. I land down below, skipping the death to Seif and the prison sequence. This just hey, saves time as I can easily make my way to the you crystal skip. cave. Bez Nothing too eventful happens in the cave, so let us skip to the uneventful fight of Seif. After skipping the cutscene, I land on my head with Seif's collar bone and throw a bomb directly behind me. Hey, yes, sir. As if she did it. Prefer of a roll. Mem rolls. We know how they work. When I load. I quit load into a certain range. Once the elevator starts to go up, I quit out. Wychodzi na wizję, która poszła, lokuje typa, jeden, jeden roll w lewo, jeden w prawo. Okay. I potem mamy roll, tylko to wymaga 40 wytrzymałości. I land down below, skipping the death to Seif and the prison sequence. This just saves time, as I can easily make my way to the crystal cave. Nothing too eventful happens in the cave, so let us skip to the uneventful fight of Seif. After skipping the cutscene, I line up my head with Seif's collarbone and throw a black fire bomb directly behind me. This destroys his cheating crystal, so I can run in and punish his upset animation. The damage is uh, yeah, he is dead. Like I said, uneventful. The next boss is the better. Seif is one, one is, I think, the only boss in the normal line of fabulary game, who I totally don't know. Aside from the fact that he has a no hit, I don't know how he gets hit. I totally don't know. Ma na nohicie jest tak absurdalnie duży damage z RTSR -e, i on ma tak długiego stana, że się go po prostu zaklikuje. Jak ja ma, miałbym go na przykład zrobić na jakimś randomizerze z małym paskiem HP albo z małym damage'u, to ja bym go nie potrafił zrobić. To get to the best boss in the game, I need to get past Quaylog, Ceaseless Demon, Demon Fire Sage. Dobra. Quaylog da się skipnąć, tego da się Ceaselessa da się skipnąć. Fire Sage da się skipnąć i Stanogę da się skipnąć, totalnie. The last two can be avoided by leveling up the Chaos Servant Covenant to rank 2. This one lock a shortcut, but first to get to Quaylog's sister for the Covenant, I need to get past Quaylog. I head down to the swamp of Blight Town and grab a useful item. Tu w ogóle jest taki skip w Blight Town, że Devcam glitch ci się aktywuje, jak w ogóle idziesz jeszcze po normalnie platformie, bez żadnego spadania. Over in the corner, guarded by two infested barbarians, is a great club. This will be useful in skipping Quaylog. After getting the club, I grab the bonfire and head to Quaylog's boss fight. I enter the fight, triggering the cutscene, or the glitch won't work. But it is also a nice opportunity to die to Quaylog next to the exit fog gate. My blood stain will help guide me, and you will see why it is needed here in a bit. Now, with the setup done, I can go and skip Quaylog. I climb up to Upper Blight Town towards the exit. Before getting to the top, I drop down here and jump to this pillar. I run around it and drop down to a lower section of it. This triggers the death cam, but I quit out okay, to remove it. Not back in, the I cam. backstep into the pillar before sprinting down and jumping. If I don't jump, the game will kill me. Now with this death cam, I walk off the edge and perform a plunging attack with the Grey Club. I hit another ledge and slide off the plunging attack landing animation. 
w sensie Defcom glitch. Jest, mi, się, mi się wydaje, że jest jeden łatwiejszy. Gdzie po prostu jesteś na drewnianej platformie, podchodzi się, robi się mały krok, aktywuje się Defcom i tyle. Nie jest czas żadnych plungingów robić, żadnych widoutów. I make my way back to Quaylog's boss room, but because it is no longer loaded in, it is hard to see where I am. This is where that blood stain next to the fog it can help me navigate. Unfortunately, this glitch is not over because quitting out in the bell room will not store my position. This means I need to get to the staircase past the bell and then quit out, but as you can see, that is a little difficult. It took me a couple of tries, but eventually I make it really far down the stairs, skipping Quaylog. Look, you can even see her from the other side of the fog gate. We are not here to gawk at Quaylog, but instead help her sister. Generalnie bardzo dużo tych zależności w DS1 jest widocznych przy randomizerach. Logika w tej grze jest fenomenalnie napisana. Jak się gra triple randomizera, czyli item, enemy i fog randomizer i ma się odwróconą oś progresji gry, to to jest tak niesamowicie przyjemne. I roll for the illusionary wall to make my way to Quaylog's sister. The abomination takes a little bit to move out of the way. While he moves, I tried to dupe humanity, but messed up the dupe. I rested at the bonfire and tried again. This time, after dropping my extra humanity, I stored 999 from the arrows. When I go to dupe the humanity, I select 90 and then tap I only needed 30, but might as well give more. I enter the covenant, offer all my humanity to level it up, and make my way to the next hurdle of the run, Quaylog's brother, Ceaseless. Skipping Ceaseless is not that bad. From up here, I am at this Dorito in the terrain and shoot This distracts the Capra demon who does not look down and falls to its death. To get down from here without dying, I perform another plunge fall damage cancel. I maneuver my way through the lava using safe areas to recover stamina and heal. There is a lot to this pathing, and if you are interested, I will have Wiecie, a link to the tutorial for this glitch. Glitchless speedrunie się to wykonuje. Lava, I make my way to the demon rune to form a mild burn. The speedrunie normalnie się przechodzi przez tą lawę w taki sposób, że jest zabić slasa. The bonfire and demon runes won't appear until he is defeated. This is not a problem right now, but will be later. For now, I can just make my way to the shortcut that will take me to the lava. Jak działa randomizer? Za każdym razem, gdy przechodzisz przez mgłę, wyrzuca cię z przy innej mgle. Czyli na przykład wchodzisz przy mgle w as, nie wiem, stary Fasylum i wyrzuca cię na arenie z Manusem. Voiding all the lava in that area. First thing I do after opening the shortcut is kill this chaos bug for the sunlight maggot. From here the worst boss in the game is finally up next, but Toki bombs can make the bed of chaos more enjoyable. After entering the fight, I run straight at the bed of chaos. I place my left Bombami. foot into the fourth tile here. Then I position my head between these two branches and throw a firebomb. Once the throwing animation has started, I hold forward. That's what Teraz zrobił jest mega niebezpieczne. On powinien podejść trochę bliżej. On mógł to hitać dostać. Character turns while throwing it without moving. After the first bomb is thrown, I quickly set up the next line of position. Wiem, bo tak no kiedyś. Between these two branches on the left. Perfekcyjne rany na ogół się wybałem na bed of chaos. This one is thrown in the same way, avoiding to hold forward, so my character turns to throw the firebomb without moving. Nie można tak widzowie. Jak robicie no hita, nie możecie tak zrobić jak teraz. After throwing the second one, I roll into the middle and get the second cutscene to know I landed my throw. Now it is rolling through branches simulator 2024. Why did they name the simulator game a year after their initial release? Please, I need to know why they do this. I take out my frustration of not knowing this information on the bed of chaos, so I can move on to the next boss, Nido. Pinwheel is not the hardest boss in the game, Pinwheel. Fortunately, getting past Pinwheel is really easy with a glitch we have already used. I make my way into the catacombs where I bully the necromancer after pushing the lever to open the first door. Continuing on through the area, I drop down from here, landing down below near the Titanite Demon Room. I run past the demon to grab the eyes of death before entering the coffin. If you have an eye of death in your inventory and wait in the coffin for 30 seconds, you will get taken to Nito's boss room. This is to join the covenant and does not start the boss fight, but we are now in the tomb of the giants, which is a different area than the catacombs. Aha, All I have to, to do is perform another force quit Ron Warp and I'll be taken to the start of the tomb of the giants. I equip the sunlight maggot and make my way to a bonfire. It is not too hard to get back here if I die, but it takes time. Might as well be safe and grab the first bonfire before making my way to Nito. I ran past every enemy and made my way to the Nito boss fight without getting hit. After baiting Nito away from the back where the giant skeletons are waiting, I get stuck in a weird angle. I get hit here and almost die, but I was able to chug my last Estus and get away. 
the NRDS replayer and me took over and I R1 spam Nito to death. Nito goes down first try, but the next boss, Centipede Demon, will not go the same way. To get to Centipede Demon, I need to perform another grab cancel. It goes about the same as the last one in that it took forever, but first I need to perform Ceaseless Skip again. Then I kill all the enemies in the old demon runes that would get in my way. After they were dead, I equip the Grass Crash Shield into my right hand to attack with it. The enemy with the grab attack I want to cancel is this Rock Worm. Ah, dobra, to znam, I drop no? down and walk backwards into this kiedyś. corner. I have to wait for the Rock Worm to do its grab attack and dodge its other attacks when it does not do it. Whenever I see the grab, I attack the Rock Worm with the shield. Sometimes I'm too late and get grabbed. Sometimes I'm slightly too late, but the grab still gets cancelled. However, when this happens, I fall down below too far and die. Every time I died, I had to do ceaseless skip again and kill all the enemies again. This glitch sucks, but when done right, I land above the centipede demon's arena and can drop down. Ceaseless skip already used most of my Estus up, but once I land down below, I have to roll out of the lava. I only have two Estus for the fight and need to trigger it by walking up to the fog gate. The demon is loaded in and I could have killed it with the bow. This is boring, so instead I chose the path of suffering. I equip full Havels, which I got after dying to the Rockworm at one point, and I also upgraded my Estus Flask with Koilog's sister. While we are at it, I should mention that I could have made it into the hallway that has the bonfire before this boss. This would have made the fight easier, but I did not know about this and instead just decided to pop off. Oh, Sente decided to just swing at me from range, so I spent some time Ale dodging his attacks after losing all my health. I now can no longer make a mistake and I needed the boss to come closer. At some point, I went screw it and took the armor off and wanted to hit the arm after it attacked. For some reason, after doing this, the demon decided to close the distance and I could attack them finally. I dodged every attack and made this fight look effortless. I honestly don't know how I managed to get away with this. Ja kiedyś trafiłem Centipede Demona na fog randomizerze i musiałem go zabić bronią, która zadawała 13 obrażeń. For once this was a skill occasion. This was the final hard part of the run. Now all the bosses left are easy to get to starting with the Demon Fire Sage. I can't enter the boss fight from the back, but I can drop down from above. Dropping down from above does not activate the AI of the Fire Sage, but it can still take damage. After all I went through, I deserve a little treat. The Fire Sage is easily dispatched, leaving the next boss to be ceaseless discharge. W ogóle po zabiciu jakiegoś bossa, nie wiem którego, aktywuje się winda, która jest mega ważną zasadą w trakcie fog randomizera. I warp to Quaylog's domain and head to the ceaseless fight. Then I cheese ceaseless. Po widzowie, po wbiciu setnego w lasa poka sobie zrobimy randomizerek jakiś. No, zrobimy sobie. I wanted to see what would happen if I entered his boss fight from the Tomb of the Giants. Po Fire Sage, okay. The answer was nothing. The fight was the same and even the table I smashed respawned. Penwill goes down to nobody's surprise. Now it is time for some payback on Iron Golem. For this fight, I also wanted to see what would happen if I entered the boss fight from the wrong way, and nothing was also the answer. I tried to attack the golem, but it did not take damage. After activating the fight by triggering it near the fog gate, it goes exactly how you would expect. The clumsy golem is silly, maybe even goofy, and falls to its death. I'm never doing iron golem skip again. That sucked, like me having to go through Blight Town again to fight Quaylog. You can't Nie no, ten ran to mi się wydaje, że jest 30 godzin trwał, naprawdę. Once I make my way to the fight, no pewnie jest, że tylko triple randomizer. When she gives me an attack to punish, her health bar just disappears. Quaylog is defeated, leading to our previous boss of Gaping Dragon. Gaping Dragon is in the depths, which I need to defeat the Capra Demon to get the key to access. You are far enough in the video and you already know where this is going. There is an interesting out of bounds that will allow me to skip Capra and get into the depths. This glitch is not necessarily easy, but after everything else I had to do, my perspective is warped. I head into the undead bird where I climb up the ladder by the rubbish hollows. Once the character starts to finish the climb up animation, I tap backwards. I don't want to hold it or I will fall off instead of getting on top of the ladder. Once on the ladder, I can roll off over the stone pile to an out of bounds section of the battlement. I follow it down until I fall down to the rat tunnel where I continue on to the female undead merchant. From her, I roll off on the parts of the tower so I don't die from fall damage. Falling down from the tower, I land on the roof of the depths. I have made it to the depths and I could wrong warp to get back in bounds, but there is a cooler way. See that blood stain that I have no idea how it ended up there? 
from the blood stain, I went to jump from the extended part of the roof to an area down below. This area is the roof of the tunnel where the bonfire of the depths is located. From this roof, I line myself up, rolling off landing down below on the rat tunnels. I turn around and follow the tunnel down to this part. This is just below the shortcut door and the interaction for it is large enough that I can open it. Opening the door moves me back in bounds where I can grab the bonfire before making my way to Gaping yes, Dragon. Up. Last time I fought Gaping Dragon, I completely forgot about the channeler, but not this time. I take care of the channeler before entering the boss fight, character development. The fight takes a little bit because of its large health pool and waiting periods because of certain attacks. After a bit, the dragon is still gaping, but they are dead. Now it is Capra time. I wanted to try something interesting with Capra and perform the out of bounds on the ladder from earlier. Then on the rat tunnel, I went the opposite way and tried to open the door. I could not open the door, but after turning around, I saw something better. The stairs right outside Capra's boss room was right there. All I had to do was roll down below to it. I knew there were dogs right outside, so I dropped down and dealt with them one at a time. The dogs in Capra's arena can be annoying, so I equipped full Havels and tanked. Capra goes down in two hits as I poise through his attack. This is where I decided to start setting up our TSR to one shot the last couple of times. I... Ale... To jest mega satysfakcjonujące w 30 godzin zepsuć grę całkowicie tylko po to, żeby potem na przykład zaanszotować bossa. Robimy one-shota widzowie w przyszłym tygodniu. Aaaa! So close. Jeden siły więcej. 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 Jeden for once, after defeating the gargoyles, I don't have to climb the ladder to ring the bell. Instead, I can head straight to the Taurus Demon. No if the first Dark gargoyle Souls almost died to one hit with RTSR, then the Taurus will da. be one shot. I kill the two archers up the tower and then repeatedly throw myself off the tower. Is the challenge Eventually, Dark Souls I'm in RTSR range and can trigger the Taurus fight. I see the demon drop down and I run back to climb up the ladder. I drop down and plunge attack the demon, dealing 3,472 damage. This is almost three times the Taurus demon's health of 1,215. Dark Souls is amazing with an amazing final boss of Asylum Demon. Power I need to get to Asylum Demon first, so I egg. Once I've egged, I arrived in the Asylum, but harder. The Asylum Demon is waiting for me at the door still. I could just defeat it right now and end the run, but that would be boring. I have a better way. I go for the asylum and make my way to the upper level where I set up RTSR of the hollows. After entering the fog gate, I perform a jump attack. The attack lands on the demon Bonus killing hit. it before I can get the plunge attack to stop my fall, so I die. After loading back in at the bonfire, I checked and the asylum demon is dead. The final boss and the hardest game ever made is defeated. Now this was not all bosses, but I wanted to beat the game in reverse order, not beat all bosses in reverse order. Some of the bosses can be open to Fine debate challenge. when they should be defeated. Fine, Vizovi, but I never did that myself. Really? That's impossible. That's so much skip. 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 That's so much sk